Again, in the nation's capital, where the ECOWAS Parliament convened an emergency virtual meeting to debate the current the resolution of the authority of heads of state and government on the activation of the standby force in Niger Republic. Muyo Thomas reports. Members of the ECOWAS Parliament are divided over the use of force in Niger. The members gathered to debate the resolution of the authority of heads of state and government from the August 10th meeting. The Speaker of the Parliament, who addressed members as the meeting opened, commended the authority for proactive efforts in addressing the situation. The ECOWAS Parliament expresses readiness, as always, through parliamentary diplomacy to work with and support all our community institutions, regional and international bodies, the last thing solutions to the crisis in the South region. The members at the virtual meeting took turns to express their concerns and stands on the resolution most spoke against the use of force. All the speakers noted that the fragility of the region should be considered also before the use of force is activated. They are concerned that women and children will be the most impacted and insist dialogue and diplomacy is enough in resolving the issue. So let what us exhaust it and that is that is that is that is that is Let us not make let us not make that mistake. Nigerians are Nigerians are against Nigerians are against I emphasize that again going to war. The, if if we are going to war, it is Nigeria that will bear the largest brunt and besides what is the answer to this, my question? Linda Ikpeazu, a member from Nigeria, reminded the parliament that dialogue and diplomacy did not work in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. She was supported in this assertion by Orlando Pierre Diaz, who says, since the military leaders use force in taking over the government, force should also be applied to remove them. Check we used in these other four countries, okay? Has it worked? Did it work? If they are still under military rule, that means whatever we use have not worked. So we need to look at okay. other solutions. Okay, thank you very much. The virtual meeting was attended by over 80% of the 115 members, but only about 23 members contributed, with 17 in support of peaceful mediation. Second speaker, who is also from Niger, insists the economic measures against the country are too stringent and are causing hardship on the citizens of Niger. He wants the electricity cut off by Nigeria to be restored and his borders open to thousands of trucks stocked at the Nigerian borders. Arguments started immediately the draft communique was read. Many of the members spoke up saying resolutions in the communique do not reflect their stand. Efforts by the Speaker to ensure Parliament doesn't go against the resolution of the authority was not accepted. The meeting was deferred to allow adjustments in the communique. The 12 member delegation set up to mediate in Niger is expected to draw up modalities for engagement in Niger and probably Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea. Moya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja. Let's quickly move on to other stories. We're in Kano. The Nigerian Police Academy, Woodill, has conducted the passing out parade of 169 assistant superintendents of police of regular course 5. The parade was witnessed by Vice President Kashim Shatima and our correspondent Ibrahim Issa has the story. <laughs> One hundred and sixty-nine fifth regular course personnel of the Nigeria Police Academy would be conducting the color party on their passing out parade occasion. One hundred and sixty-nine well-trained and nurtured graduating cadets who have successfully completed both their academic studies and professional trainings. They are worthy both in character and learning. All of them have been awarded bachelor degree in different disciplines. The passing out parade was witnessed by President Bola Tinibu, represented by Vice President Kashim Shatima. The Vice President charged them to be good ambassadors, to be diligent and have compassion while carrying out their duties as police officers. 
as we uphold our democratic values alongside addressing security concerns, let's hold us to the core virtues of our police force integrity, honesty, and compassion. We must recall yeah, citizens clearly and uphold their human rights regardless of background. Our actions must exemplify the highest ethical standards as we safeguard the rule of law. Together, we embody the principles that define a trusted and responsible police force. Out of the 169 officers, 139 are males and 30 are females. The graduates were admonished to engage in any act that will be unedifying to their good name, that of their families and the force as they commence their policing career. Ibrahim Isa, TVC News, Kanu.